the waiting is the hardest part. You ever notice in life when you're waiting for something, it seems to take forever for it to happen? If you try to watch water, the old saying that of a watch pot never boils, we know it's not true that it never boils, but it is. it does ring true that if you sit there and watch water, waiting for it to boil, to put your eggs in, to put your pasta in, your potatoes, whatever you're doing, it seems to take forever for that water to boil. If you're not watching it and doing something else, next thing you know, that water's boiling and you can add what you need to put into the water. Same thing if you're waiting for an income tax return. People get frustrated and they're waiting and waiting and waiting and they talk about, where's my check, where's my check, where's my check? And that check seems to never come. But you file your taxes, start moving on with life, the next thing you know, that check's sitting in the mailbox. All kinds of examples about waiting. If, you, if you're of engaged and gonna be married, waiting to have sex, a lot of people don't wait. They just go ahead and just give in and do it. And they just, all they think about is, I have to, I have to uh, wait or, you know, I, I wanna, I can't wait or I can't hold out. But if you just start focusing on what your marriage is gonna be like and living your life and preparing for the wedding and preparing for everything else, remembering what the Bible said, next thing you know, your marriage, your wedding night is there, you don't wait any longer. It's the same thing with the rapture. I have a lot of Christian friends and they, they're they always just focused on the rapture. They're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting for the rapture. They wanna see the rapture come now. They, they have to go home now. They can't wait for anything else to happen. The rapture has to happen now. You know, it's just, it's just, I wanna go home. I hate this world, I have to get out of here. And you know, I understand how my friends feel because I can't stand this world either. This world is not my home. I'm only passing through. I despise being here. And I'm kind of like the Apostle Paul, only in this way, I, I can't hold a candle to him. I couldn't even tie his own sandals. But the way that I'm kind of like him is he was torn as well. He wanted to go to heaven so bad, but he also knew there was an awful lot of work to do. There was an awful lot of people that needed him here to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to get the good news out, and to do his job for Christ here on earth. And that's how I am. I don't focus on waiting for the rapture. It's always in my mind. I'm always watching. I'm always, as a watchman, I'm always gathering information and I know the rapture is near. So in that way, I am waiting, but at the same time, I'm also working. I'm, I, I'm working 12 to 15 hours a day sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, getting out there, reaping the harvest and focusing on trying to point the lost and the, the backslidden saved both to the cross of Christ where they can be saved to repent of their sins, trying to encourage the believers, trying to rebuke, correct, and teach those who need that, making sure I keep my own house in order, doing everything I can possibly do to further God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. So as we're waiting for the rapture, we should be watching and waiting excitedly. The Bible tells us for those who do watch and wait and expect, we'll have discernment. God will let us know the season of Christ's return. He won't keep us in the dark. But let's not just wait. Let's not just sit on our hands and wait like we're waiting for a bus or for a plane to leave. Let's be proactive. Let's get busy for Jesus Christ in what little time we have left. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we all want to come home so bad. We love you so much. We want to be in heaven with you and with Jesus and with the saints and with all the beauty you've prepared for us. We just, we can't wait in so many ways. But please help us to be busy and stay focused while we wait and make sure we understand that billions of people are dying and heading to hell without you. And we have to just focus on pointing them to the cross so they can be saved, their lives can be changed, keeping each other in check, and doing all we can do to further your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right hand side of the Father. And since that time, you've been making a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Come live in my heart. Wash my heart white as snow. Cleanse me. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. But once you pray this prayer, 
Get your King James Version Bible. It's the only real Bible out there, the only true Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. It's your food, water, substance for your soul and your spirit so they can eat every day like you eat. Pray to your new best friend, Jesus Christ, every day. He wants to talk to you. He wants to hear from you. He loves you. Get water baptized. Pray to be sanctified with the Holy Spirit from head to toe in what little time we have left on earth before the imminent rapture. <coughs> Take your King James Version Bible. Find your Christian church. And when you go there, the pastor speaks. Open your Bible and read it. Don't read the screen above his head. Open your Bible and read it. If what he says don't match, close your Bible. Get out, walk out, find a new church to go to where they teach the Bible the way it's written. If you have questions, concerns, comments, if you want to pray, you want to talk or chat, message me. If you have a prayer request that runs a gamut of anything from a terminal illness to a sick pet or anything in between, and you want someone to pray for you that believes, message me. I prayed for and received the gift of faith. I have mustard seed faith now. I didn't do anything to deserve it. God just gave it to me. And he performs miracles daily in my various ministries. Every day I hear from people saying how God has answered a prayer and miracles happen in their life. It's all, all through the glory and power of God. All I am is, is a willing vessel using my faith and prayer. He performs the miracle and does all the work. Praise the Lord. But I'll pray for you every day expecting a miracle. As long as I pray in God's holy will, I know he'll provide. If you have you know, any questions at all, again, just contact me. Thanks for watching this video. And please share it with everyone you possibly can. Also, the link to this channel or other videos with friends, neighbors, coworkers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere. Plant the seed. Walk away and let God water it so it can grow. We have to get the word out, my friends, so people can be saved. They can repent of their being backslidden. And their lives can be changed forever. All for the glory of God. Never for mine. See, I understand my place. I realize that I'm Christ's slave. I'm nothing, nobody, the least in this kingdom. I'm a tiny fish in a huge pond, serving my master until the day he calls me home or the day I die. I love you guys. I pray for you daily. May God bless you. Good night.